Hello guys, so I'm a little bit late to this party, however, Gemini 2.5 is now in Firebase Studio. This is something that I've been waiting for a while now because they were previously using Gemini 2.0, which never really made much sense to me. So let's just kind of see what they're saying and then we'll test it out because I, I do believe in Google, like to be honest with you, like Google was kind of at the bottom of the AI race. I would argue they're now at the very top, so I mean, we've got to listen when they do stuff. So they say, first applications created with the newest version of the application prototype have improved UI. I don't really care about UI, I care about things working. Exploring some example apps. Okay, these are all just pretty you know, basic apps. What I want to know is, can it do OAuth? Can it actually code its own, like, <laughs> can Firebase code Firebase, basically? That's what I want to know. I don't really care if it can make a to-do app. I don't really care if it can make a fake piano app. It's just not interesting. It's really not interesting to me. What is interesting to me is whether or not it can do something a little bit more complicated. So I find it funny. I've seen a few uh, videos on this and literally all the video was was just using the sample prompts, which is kind of hilarious. That's not what we're going to be doing. Instead, we're going to be looking for, yeah, we're probably going to be doing React Native plus Expo. I might look at Flutter as well, but I think for now, we'll just go with React Native and Expo. The reason being is, if you don't know, React Native and Expo is possibly the easiest way to get into mobile app development. So what we'll do is, the first thing we need is a um, Google OAuth, um, Google OAuth uh, credentials, right? Another thing you actually need is to have Firebase itself set up, right? Because we're going to be using OAuth, so we do actually need these things. So we're just going to go to console here. We do already have one set up, so it's Hackers. I have my, I, you wouldn't understand my naming conventions, guys. It's just, it's, it's too complicated. Um, this is like really high level development stuff, basically. That's sarcasm, by the way. Someone didn't understand that I was being sarcastic last time I made that joke. So just, just so everyone's aware, that was, that was sarcasm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this info here. I believe this is all the info it actually needs to, to do something. Now, I'm not sure if it actually needs the other stuff as well, but we'll just grab all the stuff that I think it might need. I'm not going to show this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, please make me a quitting smoking app where... People have to make their own account using Firebase and OAuth. Once they're on the app, it should be made with React Native. They can track their uh, the days they've not smoked for and a personalized AI message each day will tell them how, uh, no, what, has happened to their body in terms of improvements, how much money they've potentially saved, and how much they have, um, how much of their life they have got back, etc., as well as maybe motivational. I can't spell today, guys. I don't, that's not how you spell motivational quotes to keep them going this should use google gemini to do this this is my api key now i have a feeling um i might need to pay a bill here i'm pretty sure i can't actually use um i, I don't think i can use this anymore but let, let's just try anyway so it looks like it might actually be okay so we'll get an api key here so again i don't care about stupid things like oh can it make a to-do app i mean Everyone and their grandma can make a to-do app, let's be honest. So we've got user authentication, smoke-free day calendar, AI-powered motivational messages, motivational quote display. Prototype this app. So we're just going to let this run now. We'll see how it does. Um, I don't really know what to expect. I don't know if this is going to be like a huge improvement or not, but we shall see. I like that they've got this switch to code button here. Um, but for now, we'll just stay in the prototype and we'll see. So I want to talk a little bit about mobile apps. Um, and also SaaS, right? Basically, what a lot of people are thinking, and I, I don't blame them, to be honest with you, is that, like, traditional SEO is, is dying, right? 
So how do we make money online? So my two kind of biggest things would be mobile applications and SaaS applications. The reason being is these two things are not going anywhere. The other one actually is e -com, right? These are my three things that in my opinion are not gonna be affected by AI summaries. They're not gonna really be massively affected by AI. People are still gonna be making apps. People are still gonna be making SaaS and people are still gonna be making e -com. Informational SEO, I'm not so sure. Right, because if you just go on Google and type like, uh, what is JavaScript? So you, you generally get search labs AI overview that will just give you an answer to everything. So informational content, I'm a little bit worried about it, honestly. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. However, things like mobile apps, things like SaaS and things like e-com, in my opinion, are not going anywhere. Which is why I'm so damn interested in mobile apps, right? It's not because, um, it's not just because it's a hot thing. I genuinely believe that mobile apps are not going anywhere. So if you want to make money from ads, for example, then mobile apps is good. If you want to make money from subscriptions, then mobile apps are good. And you can come up with a pretty damn good idea that kind of mixes AI, kind of like the example that I'm doing in this video, but maybe a bit more refined. It mixes AI with a mobile application. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, oh, but like there's a million apps out there. It doesn't matter right? One thing right now that I'll tell you will make money, right, is getting the GPT 4. Point, is it 4.0 or 4.1? I can't remember with uh, the Dali native uh, image gem, right? And turning it into some kind of um, image creation, image editing app, right? So maybe someone takes a picture on their phone. And I know that ChatGPT can do this. You don't have to tell me that ChatGPT can do this. I know that. But what you might not know is some people just prefer mobile apps, like re regardless of whether or not ChatGPT can do something. People like mobile apps that can do similar things, right? So, I mean, if you say, oh, but ChatGPT can do that, I mean, that's just true of everything, right? So you may as well just go to sleep and just not do anything. So I'm kind of working on this theory right now. I'm thinking of, oh, the other one, sorry, I forgot to say was games. Games are not going anywhere. You can vibe code games with Blender. You can vibe code games with Unity. These both have MCPs, which mean it's actually possible to vibe code these as well. So this is kind of like my theory right now, like traditional like directories and things might, like I, I'm not sure. I'm not saying for sure they're going up or down or they're done or whatever, but it just seems a little bit more difficult. This is a directory example that I've got going at the minute. I just don't know if this is like a long-term thing. I, I think it might be. I think directories are probably fine, but you know, it's just hard to know what's going to happen. Now this hasn't been released yet, but I have my friend working on, um, oh, he's done that. I have my friend right now working on, um, a expo course. Expo is basically, um, creating mobile apps. This will give you like everything that you need to build mobile apps technically, right? And then you can take this knowledge and you can take it to uh, Firebase Studio. You can take it to something like Visual Studio Code, Klein, install Expo, get the Expo MCP and start making mobile apps. The school course isn't out yet, but if you do want to join the school, it'll be the first link in the description of this video. Okay, nice. We actually have some progress here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to sign in with Google. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work from here, but if I go to switch to code... There were a couple of errors, but nothing, nothing too major, to be honest with you. Uh, I think it's npm. Is it npm on dev? Oh, we have the web here. Let's sign in. Auth pop up blocked. Okay, so it says when I press sign in here, it says Firebase auth unauthorized domain. What that normally means is there's a mismatch somewhere in my Firebase settings more than anything else. Now this is a very, very, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to download the code because it, it will be easier to see that way. Okay, so I should be able to push this to GitHub from here. So we'll just do it like that. I just want to try it out locally, um, see how it does this time. Um, so we'll call this smoking free, uh, create repo. We need to send this to Firebase. But we'll use ChatGPT because I have no idea what I'm doing. Help me push to this GitHub repo. I have already run Git in it. 
So because I'm not a coder, I don't really know what I'm doing with uh, Git. So I still use ChatGPT for basically every um, instance of using GitHub, just because GitHub is kind of awful um, for me anyway. So we've done that. We've done that. We've done that. Nothing got added though, which is a bit strange, but we'll just keep going anyway. Okay. Git push origin master. Is that going to work? No. Okay, so I've added this to the authorized domain list. Let's see if this works now. Okay, so far so good. Let's see if it's managed to do the OAuth properly. That doesn't look good. Pop up closed by user. Let's inspect this, see if we can get any error here. So sign in with Google. That works. Both of these consoles up. Sign in error Firebase or auth closed by user. It's not true though, is it? I mean, it's it's better than it was, but I mean, I really just don't understand why Google can't make something that can code Firebase. Like, you are the ones who Firebase. It's ridiculous. Your request action is invalid. This keeps happening. So we'll feed this. There we go. That's what we needed. WebSocket connection to whatever has failed. Okay, so we'll keep tag we'll keep plugging along here. I'm slightly disappointed. I had really, really high hopes for this, but it just seems to have fallen short again. It does seem better, but yeah, it still doesn't quite work with the OAuth. I just don't understand. If I was Google and I had Firebase, right? I had Gemini 2.5 and now Firebase.studio, right? How can you not combine these three things as Google to make something that can just code mobile apps instantly? I just don't understand it. The first thing I would do is, if I was Google, is I'd find out what the mistakes were with OAuth and Firebase integrations and everything, and I'd just fix them one by one. I don't understand why they're not doing that. Now, I have only been doing this for about 20, 25 minutes, right? Last time I did this, I was doing it for four or five hours without a decent result. Let's just see if we can quickly fix these errors and actually get inside the app and kind of see where we are from there. Okay, so the positives here is this is completely free. The negatives here, it doesn't seem to have a good grasp of, um, of coding itself, which is just so frustrating. I honestly, I honestly believe, and this might sound cocky as fuck, but like, if I was on their team, I would fix this. I know that I would be able to fix this, because all you need to do is in the system prompt, include the current documentation with like instructions, probably in capital saying, follow this, follow this exactly, or use this exact syntax or how, however you want to write it. And then just dump the OAuth stuff here and just make sure that it has it. Like it's not that fucking difficult. I really want to love this product. I really, really do. They just need to improve it with up-to-date documentation. I'm going to try this one more time, see if I can fix the auth form. Now, it might just be because I'm on this local uh, version, but it shouldn't make any difference. Like, it, every, everything's pretty much working here. It's just, for some reason, it gets closed around this point. Not really sure why. This is the last prompt I'll try. If it doesn't work now, then I'm just going to... I'm just going to write this off again for now. Maybe I'll have a look at like if I add documentation, blah, blah, blah. But like at that point, I'll just use client. Like it, I don't need to use Firebase Studio just because it's from Google, just because it's free. So let's just try this one more time. Sign in with Google. It's not going to work. Yeah, it's the same error. So, I mean, it's it's getting better. It's still not there, right?
Okay, so I just thought about something. It might actually be because I've already got um, an account, so we'll delete this account. We'll try one more time here, and then if this doesn't work, then unfortunately we're going to have to call this still a waste of time. Let's see. Nah, it's not going to work. I can just tell. It's going to be the same thing. Yeah. Still completely useless, guys. Um, it's very disappointing. I'm going to leave the video there. I'm, I'm a little bit... I'm not surprised, to be honest with you. Um, Google seems to like to talk about Firebase Studio and upgrade it, but they're not doing the key things that they actually need to do, which is making sure that it actually works with the technologies that people want to use inside their apps, like Firebase. Like, how can it not code Firebase? Thanks for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very soon with some more content. Peace out.